Hi everyone. Recently, I've been working on a project where I had to take input from this kind of cheap uh, rotary encoder. Now, this is an extremely common uh, component, and there are tons of guides on the internet on how to interface with it and read it. However, in my case, I had to read it perfectly. That is, never miss a single turn of this knob in either direction, no matter how fast or slow the human user is turning it. And if you're familiar with this uh, component, you know that this is uh, trickier than it sounds because this is extremely noisy in its outputs. Um, now the usual way to attenuate that is to add uh, capacitors on either on both outputs. And uh, that works if you turn it at a normal rate. However, uh, if you test it with a logical logic analyzer or a scope, you know that um, the duration of bounce when you turn it extremely slowly is actually longer than the duration of legitimate signals when you turn it really fast. That is, no matter what capacitors you choose or what kind of um, uh, software debounce you use, you either miss some of the extremely fast signals or you interpret some of the bounce in the extremely slow turning as legitimate signals. And that was unacceptable in my project, so I set out <coughs> excuse me, to build the world's best um, cheap rotary encoder reader. Uh, this is the setup. This is based on the 80tiny84, sorry, 80tiny 44A, for no particular reason. That's just what I had it uh, under hand, which I chose for my project. This is the rotary encoder with the uh, fancy knob, and um, you can notice that uh, there are no capacitors here, just the uh, pull-down resistors. And although you could claim that the uh, the breadboard itself has some parasitic capacitance, this is not uh, really what sol what solves the problem here. You also notice that I put this uh, thing here, this is not part of the circuit, it's just a way to, um, it's a marker for pointing the knob to show you how this works. Now um, I'll put that, uh, I'll connect the power, so we see that the, uh, the blue LED turns on, and this now knows my position, this is like the, um, the baseline position or the initial position. And when I turn this, you see that whenever I turn it this away from the original position, the LED turns off, and it turns on again when this returns here. Even if I go full circle, or the other way around, this will uh, you'll have the same result if you're using the uh, common uh, solutions you'll find on the internet. But if you go like this, extremely fast, like crazy, you're bound to lose some signals. But in this case, you'll see that I... Um, I put it back at the exact position, and the light is on. And if I, if I turn this extremely slowly, which which is bound to fail on other systems, again nothing is lost. I can do back and forth. I can do this fast and can slow and turn in mid, um, reverse in mid turn. Whatever I do, it still works. So, with uh, this success uh, behind us, let me show you why this works and how. Here's my almost true-to-life representation of what goes on inside this uh, cheap rotary encoder. It has uh, two tracks. Let's call them A for the outer track and B for the inner track. Uh, let's also imagine they're stationary. And uh, each track is made of two kinds of areas. The white area is, let's call it disconnect. And the black area is the connector where the uh, track is uh, electrically connected to the input of the rotor encoder. You know the encoder has three pins, the common, output uh, A and output B. So it, it either connects or, or disconnects the, this input to the output. That's the, and the connection happens on the black areas and disconnects on the white areas. Now let's imagine um, these two points, the red points, represent two uh, two wires or balls or whatever that are uh, turning along the tracks when you turn the knob. The knob is like this, and when you turn it, these dots uh, move around the uh, the tracks. So let's imagine that I'm turning the knob uh, clockwise, and let's see what kind of output we get from these two points. Here's the uh, voltage, here's time. And that's that will be A, that will be B. So you see that uh, 
first of all, um, B comes to contact with a black area, so that begins with 0 and goes up, while A is still 0. Then a little while later, A contacts the black area, so A goes up too, right? But a little later, B goes out of the black area into the, into the white area, it goes down, while A is still up, and only then A goes down. Then you're here. And it all it happens again. Here, just the same pattern, exactly the same pattern. You'll have A going like that, and B going prior to that, and ends prior to that. This is the pattern of a clockwise rotation. The pattern for a counterclockwise rotation is just the same, except in reverse. You'll have the um, A will touch the black area first, so A will rise first, then B, then A drops, and then B drops. Uh, I said it uh, it goes down to zero, but that's not accurate because uh, you said just disconnect, so it's floating. Uh, that's why I had the um, the pull down pull down resistors uh, outside the the contact. But that's the pattern that we have now. Um, the common wisdom uh, says that uh, in order to read to understand what uh, which way the, the encoder turns, the knob turns, is to look at uh, a whenever it goes up from uh, 0 to 1. If B at that moment is high, then it means that uh, we're turning uh, clockwise, like we, uh, <coughs> like we demonstrated before. However, if you're going that way, and A goes up here when B is low, that means you're going counterclockwise. Um, that's uh, pretty decent as long as you debounce, because you can have because of the bounce, you'll have uh, all these bounces here, and here, and here, and if you're not careful, you'll interpret each and every one of these little uh, microsecond bounces as uh, legitimate signals, like you've turned this uh, in who knows what kind of speed. So you have to debounce. However, as I said before, uh, the, the bounce duration is so variable that sometimes if... Um, if, for example, you can have, uh, uh, when you turn this quickly, you'll have bounce in, the no in an order of uh, microseconds. If you turn it very slowly, you'll have bounces so long that the bounce itself is in, in, um, in the millisecond uh, range, which is uh, actually longer than when you turn this extremely quickly. And the legitimate signal is when you turn this ex extremely quickly, so as I said, you can't tell which one is which. So I've uh, developed a different system. Now, uh, before we continue, a little disclaimer. I do not claim to have invented the wheel or anything. I know that other people have uh, posted uh, similar solutions to mine in uh, on the internet, even years ago. But they're not too many, and their solutions are usually uh, uh, drowned amid the background noise of all the lesser solutions that I presented earlier. I also suspect that this uh, kind of solution is, um, is similar to what goes on in hardware solutions for uh, rotary encoder reading. I think they're called uh, quadrature encoders, but uh, that's a different matter. So let's go back to the signal, the legitimate signal, the ideal signal of a uh, rotary encoder. As it turns clockwise, you have uh, B goes up, then A goes up, then B goes down, then A goes down. So let's put it in a table. We'll have A and B. We begin with zero on both, then B goes up, so it's uh, that, then A goes up, then B goes down, then A goes down, which is exactly the same state as here. Now this, um, this you can look at that as a state machine. You know, uh, you put this system in a state of, uh, the initial state of uh, zero, for instance, then you can either move to, if you find uh, this uh, signal coming on, uh, the A goes up, then it means that from the zero you have to go here because A went up or if B went up you'll go to this state remember this is cyclic right now let's say you at uh, zero one that's here then suddenly A goes up then you go to this state and then B goes down you go to this and then you arrive back at the beginning and if you follow this exact sequence this, 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 and this, then you know that you've made one uh, step 
that the knob is made one step in clockwise direction and vice versa if you go you find this sequence in your data that it means you, you turn the other way around now the the great thing about this is that uh, this uh, this can handle bounce as well because if you have bounce here for example so uh, we were here and then A went up right so it went here with this first bounce but then it then it uh, came back down again no problem you just go back here then it goes up again go up and then it goes down and up and down and up and down but it's, uh, eventually it will settle on, on either state it can either go back to here uh, to this state or it can go here it will settle and from here you can go back to, to your counting of states and see if you're going clockwise or counterclockwise. Um, the, the essential point here is that uh, even the noisiest, noisiest uh, rotary encoder will never change the output on both of its channels at the same time. Even if the wildest uh, bounds are happening, it's simply uh, impossible when a human at least is turning the knob. So, um, so this handles all bounces. It even handles the special cases where the user changes the direction of the turn in mid-step. This is extremely important because uh, none of these simple schemes that only look at A goes up, they can never handle correctly the cases where the user is like um, doing the the turn. You know, this is uh, some of uh, some kind of mechanical uh, feedback. You can hear and you can feel whenever it's, it uh, snaps to place at the end of a single. Uh, let's put back in, back in power so you can see the light. Um, whenever it completes a cycle, it snaps to place. However, the user can do half a step and then go back. And other systems, the simple system, will never be able to handle that, but mine can. Because again, it's just a matter of uh, counting, uh, of incrementing or decrementing a, a counter based on the direction that your input is moving. So um, uh, let's again go back to the hardware. The outputs here of the auto encoder go into um, two different pins, obviously, of the 80 Tiny 44A, and they, um, whenever they change, they raise the uh, pin change interrupt on this microcontroller. Inside that interrupt I read their states and decide uh, where I am. But it's important to notice that uh, some bounces can be so quick that the interrupt code is not fast enough to catch them in time. That is, let's say I, ha I had the A go up with this little uh, short bounce here. So A went up. So the interrupt is raised but by the time I get to the by the time the code gets to read the actual values on the pins, it reverted back to here. So uh, I was here before, and I, uh, it seems like something changed, but when I read it, I didn't see any change. And this can be devastating for your counting, so you have to take that into account. You have to check that it actually changed, not just that the interrupt chain, the pin change interrupt has uh, raised, but you have to see that it actually changed, that you can read it. And another thing, of course, you do want to put um, small capacitors here on the outputs. I'm going to put some in my uh, in my uh, final project, obviously. Just I, I uh, didn't use them here to demonstrate that this works, and uh, even if they're not here, but you should pu put them because without them, you can have uh, lots of uh, little bounces that will uh, choke the the application code on your microcontroller because it will it will be busy handling all those uh, successive interrupts. If you, if your microcontroller needs to do something else like handle other kind of interrupts, or timers or time critical code, uh, this will be a bottleneck. So for the fast inter for the fast bounce, you really want to have some uh, capacitors here. The the long bounce. Uh, the, the confusing bounces are handled by this system. You also notice that this is a very similar, this is actually a gray code. 
you know, the numbering system where the difference between each consecutive number is just one bit. And that's uh, deliberately so. So from 0, 0 to 0, 1, you change this bit, then this bit, then this bit, then this bit. Um, it's not extremely uh, important to understand gray code for this application, but it does help you to, to write um, a little more um, economic code. But that's up to you. So this is my system. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope it's, it helps and it will help uh, eradicate these uh, useless uh, Arduino type uh, uh, guides on how to read rotor encoders because they don't work like they should. Thank you for watching. Take care and see you next time.